I'm really sort of a person of style and style has always been very, very important to me. It's a part of my mind that seems to excel. In about five minutes, I get the story of people's life. I had a really hard divorce. Hi, Jazz. Hi. How are you? Good. I have this huge book of people that I've met and know and helped. You're gonna feel better. Sometimes it's very surprising. Sometimes I find it hard to like not sit down. You would not touch me anymore, which is weird, right? He wouldn't touch you anymore? No. It's not always just about this, it's about this. Giving them the strength to do what they know what they really have to do. You don't need a boyfriend at all. You need a sexual encounter. I think the idea of pot cooking, pot therapy, is just life, isn't it? It all started at the family dinner. The family meal was always not only about the food, but it was telling about your week. And in your week you have problems, in your week you have triumphs, and in your week you have things that you need to confide in. When we have a meal with friends, it's like that family Sunday dinner where you open up, you really, really can talk to each other. And I think that's what food does. I've come from an eclectic family where my aunt was a wig maker and my parents were obsessed with food. That obsession with food traveled over to me. So the idea of a Renaissance man, you know, there are hairdressers who either cut hair or color hair. And people said to me, how odd, Paul, that you do both. And I always say to them, that if you told Michelangelo he couldn't paint, you would have never had the Sistine Chapel. If you told him he couldn't sculpt, you wouldn't have had the David. God has not given me the best brain in the whole world, but in my hands is talent. The impetus is life, just tasting, being with friends, and then trying to come up with your own concoction. This is my herb garden. I grow all the herbs that are on tonight's dinner. And that's all fresh dill from my garden. You see that beautiful fresh dill? From spring until fall, we have something blooming. I use what's fresh. One fig. One, one package of figs, fresh figs. Oh, a package, and where are they, in the fridge? They're, no, they're fresh figs. This whole house was inhabited for 45 years by two gay gentlemen called the Donald and the Donald. The minute I walked into the house when it was for sale, I said, I feel an energy in this house. And the lady said, the Donald and the Donald must be calling you here. Come to find out a year or two later, many of the doors that I've added, many of the porches that I've added to the house were originally here. And just recently we were at a dinner party in the Hamptons. These two other gay men, who are about 70 now, asked me where I lived, and when I told them, they go, you live in the Donald's house. We used to go there years ago for dinner parties in the gardens because the Donald's loved their gardens. I hope I brought the gardens back to some kind of splendor that the Donald's had when they were living here. I want you to get together. The first and most important thing when planning a meal is that I always ask my guests, is there anything they can't eat? All the meal is made around here. Really? Yes, because I have to make everything vegetarian. Well, you don't have no, to. No, I want to. Now, there's many times where somebody at my table doesn't eat cheese, somebody at my table doesn't eat meat, somebody at my table might not eat fish, and then it gets a little confusing. I want you to get together. We're going to be doing a love match because that's why Vanessa's here, to be fixed up. She wants to have a child, she's 42. We need to find her man quickly, pumped up. It's a bunch of my girlfriends who are clients. 
and they're not all as good in the kitchen as I am. So I teach them a few tricks. We're working through some other dilemmas in their lives, sort of like queer eye for the straight guy meets sex in the city, and um, they have real problems, real life. And we really work through the food, a collaboration. The clock is really ticking. Mistakes can be made, things can happen. Grilling face on the grill. <laughs> but there's still a meal that's going to come out at the end. I think most cooking shows are about just a recipe. It's not just about always doing what's on the ticket. It's about being brave enough to experiment and to try. Good times are, are shared amongst friends together. We're going to be able to visit lots of people and try lots of different things and um, hear some very interesting stories. Oh, it's going to be lovely. It's a pretty color, isn't it? Where did you find the recipe? Did you just invented it? Just ask me. No, well, did I find no but where?